All right, everybody. I thought I'd do a quick video on how to um, put a rock cord on your crayfish trap to make them legal in Washington. Uh, other states might require a, a rock cord too, I don't know. But I know here in Washington, most traps that you can buy over the counter at your local hard or sporting goods store uh, don't meet the legal requirement. Um, uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to use one of these cheap Fraybill traps. These are about eight bucks. Uh, they, it's kind of a crappy design, but you know, people use them and they do catch crawdads. So, um, but yeah, most people just put them out there um, stock with the with the factory clip on them, and that's not legal here in Washington. I don't see anybody get a ticket. Not that I've ever heard of anyone getting a ticket for it, but still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's a really cheap, easy way to do it with stuff that you probably already have around the house. Um, this is a hair tie. I think it's a three millimeter hair tie. It doesn't really matter. It's just got to have a little bit of a bungee to it. Uh, and it doesn't have to last forever because it's so cheap. I mean, you can get a whole package of these at Walmart uh, for, I don't know, a couple bucks. So if it lasts you, one of them lasts you a season, that's great. Uh, here is a piece of uh, jute cord that I just tied into a loop, um, but uh, this is a piece of cotton yarn that would work just as well. Uh, like I said, it doesn't have to last for months and months because the whole point is that it will rot <laughs> and break. So you kind of want it to rot within, you know, uh, I mean, a couple weeks, a month. You know, you just don't want that trap. If you lose your trap and it's... Uh, out in the wild you don't want it to continue to kill crayfish for you know five six years <laughs> so you know if this lasts a month or a couple of weeks great uh, you should probably replace it as you know as often but as cheap as yarn is uh, who, who cares you know you just you just cut off a piece tie it in a loop I'll show you how I did that right now so you just cut off a pretty long piece because it makes tying the loop easier put put the two ends together uh, and just fold it around and tie it Stick the two ends through the loop you just made. I don't know if this is even showing up. My hands are in the way. And then now you have a little loop. Uh, and I think in Washington, the, the cord has to be natural fiber. So cotton, jute, hemp. A um, couple other things are macrame cord, um, cotton candle wax or candle wicks, um, hemp twine you can get all this at a craft store or your local walmart or whatever so once you have your loop uh, this is what i do i put the two ends together and then pull the through like that and now those are tied together and then i do kind of the same thing with the loop here i put the the loop in through the hole And now that I have that loop, I run the hook back through that loop and then fold it down over itself. So now I have, I have a bungee and I have a hook and I have a small piece of rot, <laughs> rotable natural fiber thread that uh, is under the eighth inch thick. Uh, and that will meet Washington uh, legal requirements for uh, closure on your trap. So now, I, I'll take one of the ends. Let's see if I can get this in frame here. And this is the side opposite of the hinge piece. Hopefully that's showing up. So what I do is I take this loop and I feed it down somewhere near there. Feed it through. Ah, come on. And then back out through one of the little holes. Not the same hole, obviously. Oh, I lost it. A little fiddly when I'm trying to face it towards the camera, but it's pretty easy. Now I have the loop. I just stick the hook through that loop like that. Is it showing up? So now I have that on there and it's a bungee. So when I stick the two sides together with the factory hinge piece, just like that. And then I pull this across and just loop it somewhere so it's tight. And as you can see, that's closed. And when when this rots, let's see if I can get that in frame here. We're just going to pretend this is rot. 
that will break and the trap will pop open. And then that way, you know, it's not killing crayfish and other fish for years to come. And then you saw I didn't tie anything like super not tight where you have to get rid of everything. So really all you need to replace that little piece is another loop of jute cord or whatever. You can use the same hook. Uh, this hook, let's talk about hooks for a second. This hook here I made out of a piece of galvanized uh, galvanized wire. Uh, this hook here I made out of a piece of coated uh, hanger. Uh, but this hook here, I bought a pack of a hundred stainless steel S hooks on Amazon. I'll leave a link below and you know, that should last me probably the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, and I think it was eight bucks for all of them. So I'll leave a link below. Uh, and I just, they come, they come as open S hooks and I just smash the, smash one side with a pair of pliers to close it up so that, you know, it can, you can loop the thing around, but that's super easy. Like that's. Now I have another S hook. Um, I will try and find a cage with a door on it and show you how the same exact setup works on a door. Okay, I got a cage here with a door. Uh, and same same thing. I've got the loop hook already put together. Uh, and on this one, I'm just going to do what I did on the other one. Loop it around and through and put the hook through that loop coming through the cage so now it's attached to the cage and then when I close the door and pull and hook it over the over the top here the door is closed oh hold on got it tangled here we go and I just hook that somewhere in there and now you can see that the door is oh, let me get it in frame now the the door is closed uh, and then when you get back and you check in your traps it just opens you get your crayfish out whatever um, but if you lose your trap uh, you can just rot and when you when it rots the hinge is at the bottom of the door so the door will just flop open it's not spring loaded or anything um, it's just you know the hinge is on the bottom so that's how you should probably set up your your traps so that the door is pops open but I mean there's no spring on it or anything it's just floppy but you know that bungee holds it closed until it rocks and then it pops open. All right, hopefully that showed up. I'll show you a couple other cool things about this design. All right, so now you have this on your trap and you don't want this dangling to get caught and hung up on everything while you're transporting your trap. So I just uh, hook it to itself. Uh, and another cool thing is um, if you have a stack of these like I do, I mean, I have two sets here, you can take, take that loop here and hook it to the top of that one and like you can see this one has another one on it uh i hook it down and now they're all nested together and they're not going to come apart and it makes it easy to transport or store your traps all right another thing to be legal here in washington uh, on your crayfish traps is that it has to have a buoy attached to it uh, and there's not a lot of explanation about what's required there's no color requirement the only thing it says is that you can't use like an old bleach bottle or milk jug because uh, they don't want it to look like garbage floating around out there but other than that it seems pretty wide open so what I came up with something super cheap is two pieces of pool noodle glued onto a piece of three quarter inch uh, PVC pipe uh, with some paracord attached to it and then I used the factory clip that came with my uh, fray bill traps uh, I tied that to the end and then underneath all this cord is my name and address which is another thing that's required that you have to have on the buoy your name address and maybe phone number uh, so here I'll show you how I put one of these together all right first of all I cut my piece of PVC pipe at seven inches uh, that gives me enough room for the two and a half inches of the pool noodle and then a space in the middle to have my name and address and phone number uh, and then that gives me a spot to wrap my uh, paracord. But the first thing I want to do is I want to drill a hole in the center. Uh, this is a quarter inch drill bit. A really dull one. All right. <laughs> so now I have a piece of quarter inch, uh, or a quarter inch hole in there for my paracord. So I feed that down in there, down in that hole and pull it through. Sometimes it's a little tricky. 
Sometimes it just works right away, like this one's going to. So yeah, I just pull that through. And then I just tie a big loop in the end. Uh, and the reason for that, sometimes I, I do, I have been uh, taking a, like a 12 inch piece and then tying a knot in that. And that keeps this loop from being pulled up inside the PVC pipe. So now that loop will always be sticking out. You might want to put your uh, your glue these on first, <laughs> but you can still do it even if you put your cord on first. So what I did was I took some of this E6000 glue. Um, I was going to use silicone glue, but I couldn't find it. So I just used this and it seemed to work fine. So I open that up and I just put a, a ring of glue around the top edge here doesn't have to be a lot I mean there's not going to be a lot of pressure on this or anything like that and then I take my whoop I don't want to set that down now it's got glue all over it feed that through my pool noodle get that started and then I just kind of spin it as I push it in until the ends meet like that and then I'll do the same exact thing to the other side. Yeah, push the poon a little on and spin it as it goes up in there. And that should be plenty of glue to hold that poon a little on there. It doesn't seem to melt it or anything. Uh, and then you just cut your paracord however long you want and start wrapping. After you put your name and address on there, that's really important because that's required too. So you wrap all your extra line on your buoy like this uh, and then I just tie a loop in the end and put this closure on here and how I use it on these traps oh, so I'll put one of these together with the, the rock closure hopefully that's in frame so that's closed and as you can see, normally you would put the that this clip through these two uh, uh, eyes right there, but I just put this through one of them, and that way it doesn't close the trap together, but it gives you a nice pick point on your trap, and it doesn't matter, you know, the trap, the crayfish aren't going to pop this open, so. Just like that. And then you can lower your trap into the water, and... You just let this unwind uh, it can either float on the surface or like you do what I do and I usually uh, take it over to the bank I'll throw this out in the water uh, I'll unwind this all the way to the bank and then I'll like tie this to a tree or something uh, the floats <laughs> required but it doesn't say it has to be floating on the water so that's what I do and I try to like hide this in the bushes so that it's not real visible but I don't know if you're if you're out in the middle of a lake just uh, just let it unravel. <laughs> 